When you guys went back to your classes, you all administered the math show what you know because you wanted to see some baseline data for the standard 4G1, which is draw points, lines, segments, rays, angles, etc. Um, and I'd be able to identify these in two dimensional figures. What did you find with your different classes? I had only one student show mastery of that vocabulary. So I'm led to believe that if my class was chosen, we would have to do a big review of the vocabulary beforehand. Right, and get I had a successful yeah. lesson. And I'll piggyback off Chris said the same kind of thing. I had two kids and the whole class that really mastered that. So I would know the same thing. If I was picked, there would have to be a lot of previewing um, and reviewing because mm -hmm. some of this was from last year. So mm -hmm. that's what I saw in my class too. I really need to do a preview. Um, same thing, I mean, they show the angles with support. For the vocabulary, were they familiar with some of the vocabulary terms, or you'd have to do a review as well? Yeah, definitely. And Christine, how is your class with the vocabulary? My students stay well with the vocabulary, and uh, very little food is needed. Okay. So this is really a two-part standard when you're looking at it. One is understanding the vocabulary, which is truly a third grade standard. Mm -hmm. And the other piece is identifying those different geometric terms in real life situation, two dimensional uh, figures, <clears throat> three dimensional, two, two dimensional figures. So with that, um, what is the next step you'd like to take? Because you've got a little bit of differentiation with your groups. Well, I think we need to preview it, and we have mm -hmm. some really good uh, smart board activities. We could use those. And I think we need to go ahead and look at our math book and see what support there is there for this information, too. Yes, um, as I'm looking at it now and looking up at the chart, I see this really wasn't based on Common Core, and I'm seeing there are more vocabulary words here than there are there, so I really don't think we can really just use this as our summer point. So that's a good point. Your math book is not making a direct connection to common core standards that the vocabulary, the terminology is not the same. Right. So we want to be careful when we're using our uh, Go Math books to um, check them against the common core standards. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. So when we start to list the qualities we envision for our students in the lesson, We'll want to keep that in mind um, that we're referring directly back to that standard. Um, so you're going to preview the math vocabulary. So your main focus then is going to be what for your lesson today? Because it was a two-fold standard. It's going to be the identifying, the identifying the, and applying. Right. applying. Okay. So what are some qualities that you envision uh, for your students in the identifying the two-dimensional figures? students will be able to identify and draw real-world examples of geometric terms. Did you say figures in, two, in two-dimensional terms? No, I said you have to draw real-world examples of geometric terms. Identify those, identify. Yeah, so yeah. they identify in real world. Identify in real yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. real world examples of mm -hmm. geometric. Okay, what geometric terms specifically did you want to focus on? The standard is listed here. Did you want to focus on all these pieces? All the, all the uh, geometric terms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So the qualities we envision is that they're going to be identify, able to identify and draw real world examples of geometric terms and the terms are listed here. That, um, when we look at our planning um, and we look at our domain is really under um, students interacting with new knowledge. You have all of those qualities listed on your qualities of a good lesson, but to tie it back into 
um, what kind of lesson we're designing, it really is important that we identify the critical information, we organize the students to interact with the new knowledge, previewing the new content, chunking content, the processing of new information, elaborating, recording and representing knowledge, and reflecting on learning. So to keep all those pieces in mind as we begin then now to walk through our lesson. We're going to pull up Google Docs shortly and um, go ahead and write in our academic and our social goals, which are going to be based off of the standards here, and keeping these pieces in mind in um, Domain 1, Design Question 2, as we start to plan through our lesson. Let's take a look at Google Docs now. Our Google Docs pulled up, so we're all able to collaborate at the same time. First, we need to really look at our academic focus. We have the standard listed up here, so we can all kind of look at it together. With Google Docs, we can all type at the same time, so uh, as you start thinking of ideas, go ahead and anybody feel free to take over and start typing in the ideas and we can fine tune whatever we have to say in a bit. So who'd like to talk uh, first about the academic focus? Any ideas? Yeah, I think that we should tie it into the qualities that we envision. So you had written we want to identify and draw real world examples. So I think um, if we tie in our common core standards to what we envision, we can kind of come up with something um, students will be able to like, draw and identify points, line segments, rays, angles, perpendicular, parallel lines using real world examples. And that way we can just tie it in together using our vocabulary and our standards. So that's Who'd like to capture that for us? I'll have time. Can you say that one more time for us? Yeah. Um, students will be able to draw and identify points, line segments, rays, angles, and then in parentheses, go ahead and write um, right angles, acute angles, and obtuse angles. That way we can be specific. Um, perpendicular, parallel lines, using real world examples. Does that seem like it'll work out well for an academic focus for our standard? Mm -hmm. And I think we do need to be specific though and get that two-dimensional in there since we're not doing three-dimensional figures and we're only focusing on the, the two-dimensional figures. Right, yeah, that's figures. a good point. So I'll just put that at the end of what you just said. Yeah, okay. Great, terrific. Does that look like a solid academic focus? Remember, it's a living document. We can always come back and make tweaks and changes. Is that a good start? I think so. Yes. All right, let's take a look now at the social focus. Um, you would said you wanted to kind of look at uh, speaking and listening standard 41C, which is primarily focusing on students listening and being able to share what their partner said making comments, contributing to the discussion. So how do you want to phrase that? Maybe students will work using independent think and uh, work time and share with their group. And then have focus guided conversations that lead to a consens consensus and they can justify their responses. Oh, I saw something that would work well with that. The showdown, where one teammate reads a question out loud, so that we go with the close response to questions. Mm -hmm. Students work independently to solve the problem, then show their answers when a teammate calls showdown, then they celebrate or coach each other. Mm -hmm. yeah, love that. yeah, and they can use the whiteboards, draw their picture on there, show it up, and then discuss it. That's going to bring in a lot of student engagement, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Kristen, thank you for capturing that. Uh, academic focus, can you get down, um, Suzanne, can you tell us one more time, what was it, Christine, I'm Christine. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Christine, can you tell us what you were thinking for the wording of that social focus? Mm -hmm. Students will work using independent work time, share with the group, and then have focused, guided conversations to come to a consensus, and then we would um, utilize the showdown. Yeah, and that's going to tie nicely into our speaking and listening standard because they're going to be responsible for speaking and listening. Mm -hmm. They don't show down. Sometimes the kids at the same time just start yelling at each other like, <laughs> oh, this is what I got. And so it's going to be important that one person's listening while the other person's speaking and then vice versa. The other thing I thought was that they're going to need think time, especially mm -hmm. certain groups of children. I need that extra think time. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. 
Where can we put so that? independent think and work time? Independent think and work time. Okay. And Good point, share with the group. The one that you just need to circulate, you can see. Yeah. Really yes. good point. All right, so I have students will work using independent think and work time, share with the group, and have focus guided conversations to come to come to a consensus, and they're going to do that through show sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, terrific. As I'm looking across our lesson planning process guide, I know we, we've used this in lesson study to help us plan through, it's just a, a planning framework. We've already looked at our step one, establishing the academic and social focus. Looking through those guiding questions, does it look as if we've covered all of the lesson purposes? So yeah, then let's take a, good, let's take a look at step two then, creating a plan for introducing the lesson. Because that will be, although it's step two here, that's actually the first step in our lesson. So um, let's look at some of the guiding questions for step two. Um, how will the essential learning goal for the lesson be communicated and monitored, referred to throughout the lesson? What background knowledge, vocabulary do my students need to access the lesson? What content, what connects this lesson to previous lessons? And how will I hook with excitement and enthusiasm and interest about upcoming learning? How will I connect current learning with, with real life skills that students need to be successful in the 21st century? And how will I prepare students to work together? So that's our next step for introducing the lesson. What do you think our first step will be in our lesson plan? How will we present the learning goal to the students? students? By explaining the learning goal to the students. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so step one is going to be the learning goal. And, you know, we'll, we'll write what the teacher will say, what the students will do, do. So our next column is teacher actions, intended student actions, the difficulties the students may have, and what the teacher is going to do if the difficulty is observed. So, what would you like to write for that first piece? How can you um, identify and draw, draw real-world examples of geometric terms? 